we rely upon the Holy Spirit to give us revelation of the Word of God. We come with hungry hearts. We come to be fed by the Spirit of God and the Word of the living God. For we realize it's not the Word of men, but it's the Word of the living God. And Father, we thank you that we're learning to receive the abundance of grace that you have poured out upon all of us. And we thank you now as our hearts are open, our ears are open, we're going to pay attention and learn and grow and mature and grow up in Christ in all things that we might glorify you in all things. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we've been talking about the law last week. Wednesday, and uh, I think we got as far as uh, Romans 5, so I want to give a little backdrop and bring us up to date. When, when you read the book of Romans, Paul, of course, thanks God for the different people there in Rome and all of that, and then he talks about the natural man, a man without Christ. And yet he says, but they're still, they're still guilty because God has revealed himself by everything he has created. So really man is without excuse. Then, and, and basically all that's through chapter 1. Chapter 2, he talks about the religious Jews, all them that have religion. They are just as lost as the others are. And so he lets him know, and then he summarizes it in Romans chapter 3, verse 323. He says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, we've learned that many years ago. That's why we reached out and received Christ, because he's the one that saved us from our sins. And we passed through the cross and and he's talking about now, but all are justified through Christ. So we were once lost, we were, were once sinners, we got all that cleared, but now we are saints of God, we are sons of God, we're daughters of God, heirs of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We are His people, all right? Now, as God's people, there sometimes we will sin, but he's made provisions there. And that's found in 1 John 1, 9. Okay, we know about that. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, start with, uh, let's start uh, with verse, chapter 5, verse 1. All right. Here we go. Thank you for putting that on the board. All right, here we go. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So what's the problem? <laughs> we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So a lot of times the, the situations in our world, the external things, mess us up and we feel like we don't have peace. And many times we don't because we see things we don't like. We see things that happen that is not really, that shouldn't really happen, but we're in a world that is fallen and the curse is upon the earth. But in our spirit man within us, even though there's all kind of confusion around us, we should be enjoying what? The peace with God. And we enjoy that peace. Now, how many understand so far what we're saying? Do you have that peace? All right, now, all of us have failed, and we've let things bother us. People do this. People do that. People don't do this. People don't, that, you know, well, they shouldn't do that. I don't know this. But, see, you've got to learn to keep all that out. You can't control people. Everybody say, I can't control people. Because if you try to control people, one foot here on that one, one foot here, one foot here, and one there, and there's about another 20,000 out there you can't hold down. And now you're all bound up with, with their problems. It was one thing that I had to learn as a minister, don't let your problems get in me. 
Hello? <laughs> uh, sometimes that's hard to do. But I tell you, you've got to do it. You've got to learn to do it. My Bible's falling apart. Ah, my goodness. All right. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay, uh, put the Amplified up there on that one now. Romans 5, 1. Through him also we have our excess. No, verse 1, uh, Willie. Verse 1, back to 1, Amplified. Therefore, since we are justified, acquitted, and declared righteous, and given a right standing with God... Through faith. All right. Now, claim that. Receive that. Yes. Are you justified? Raise your hand. Yes. All right. Are you acquitted? Yes. All right. Not guilty. Declared righteous. Yes. All right. And given a right standing with God. Yes. Some of you didn't raise your hand. I always hear them hands go up. I, I, you know, I, we can get on with other things, you know. If I th still think you don't know it, i got to back up. I want us all to go as a group. We're moving as an army. That should be a settled fact. Just let that soak in. Whew. The war is over. Notice what it says. Therefore, since we are justified, we are justified. Let it sink in. We are justified. You are justified. You have been acquitted. All charges dropped. He paid a debt that he did not owe, and we have a debt that we couldn't pay, but he paid it for. We're free. The bill is free. Your house is yours. If the man comes up and says, we, we want the payment, no, the house is paid for. That's simple. That's not, that's not hard to understand. Notice what it says now. Right standing with God. We can come right. Listen to this. We can come right into the throne of God. We have access into the very presence of God. God. The God that created all the universe. We can come right into his presence by what Christ has done. Not with arrogance. Oh, with thanksgiving. Now notice this. Standing with, through faith, let us grasp. Everybody say, Lord, help me to grasp it. Oh, yeah. Grasp the fact that we have the peace of reconciliation. Reconciliation means made friendly again. God ain't mad at us. He ain't mad at us. Yeah, but you know, I, I, he's not mad at you. I got three kids. I don't tell nobody, but they boo-booed a few times, but I love them. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, I got three daughters, and sometimes I, all, all, one is 60 years old, one is 56, I think, the other's 54. And I've, in my lifetime, I've seen them boo-boo a few times. Well, more than that, but quite a few times. But it ne listen, it never stopped my love for them. Do we understand that God's grace, we just read a little while ago, abundance upon grace upon grace, favor upon favor, gift upon gift, he has stored upon us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, man, soak in that for about three days. You'll be walking on the ceiling. All right, listen to this. Verse 2 now. now. This gets better. Through him. Notice also we have our excess, our entrance, introduction by faith into his grace. State of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. Read it, children. And let us rejoice and exalt in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Oh, the Holy Ghost was set my feet a dancing. Oh, man, when it gets in, you it get down to your feet, and your feet will start jumping. Uh, everybody do that. Come on. Come on. Two, three, 
Three. Can you do it with Saved both by grace. I, I did one. Okay. Kept by grace. Purified by grace. It's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood that cleansed me. Hallelujah. Now. Oh, I'm feeling it in my bones. Oh, my goodness. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's refreshing when it gets into the spirit man. You have to make him sit down. Don't make a fool out of me. Up, he's jumping again. Up, boop, boop, boop. Now behave yourself, inner man. Inner man, now calm down. Now, outer man, you just do what I tell you to do. Now, what do I come by? That, 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 that. Oh, that inner man's a jumping, and the outer man's going with him. Look at that. that, that, that. Come on, Mike, get up here and help me out of it. Oh, whoop. <laughs> Ah, come on. Oh, look at that, man. Look at that. Oh, now the inner man's coming out. Woo! Turn around, look at everybody there. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Oh, oh, look at that. Come on. Come on. Anybody want to join us? Come on. Hey, hey. 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 Oh, the trumpet in Zion. Blow the trumpet in Zion. We've been justified, sanctified. Hallelujah. Quit it. All charges dropped. God has freed us by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, you can sit down. You wear yourself out. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's great. All right, let's go to the next verse. Man, well, what have they been putting in that water? My name is Jimmy. I'll take all they give me. Moreover, does that move over? Or <laughs> Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. Now, you see, that's what the Holy Spirit was doing. And when you got joy, I got the joy, joy. Where? I got the joy, joy, joy. Go ahead. I got the joy, joy, joy. Where? And I will praise him forever for it. Look, let us exalt and triumph in our troubles and rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that the pressure and affliction and hardship produces patience, undeserving endurance, unwavering endurance. Woo! It produced something in us. Hallelujah. Now, let's move to the next, real quick, like. <clears throat> and endurance, fortitude, develops maturity. <coughs> oh, I want to be mature. There's the process. We just read the process, didn't we? There's the process. Of character, approved faith and tried integrity and character, for this sort produces the habit of joyful and confidence hope of eternal salvation. Next verse. Verse 5. Such hope never disappoints or deludes or shames us. For God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, we can look back on our lives and we can see what we try to love this individual, try to love that individual. Within our own being, we don't have it. But God has so graciously given us a supply of His love. And that's what we love people with. It's His love. We can't love Him with our love. But as you let the Holy Spirit be Lord, then we can love with His love. Do you have any grudges against anybody tonight? Hmm? How many hearts are clear? Mine's clear. Well, that's good. That's, boy, that's, that encourages me. You're not mad at nobody. But I tell you what, I owe you all something. Really, uh, I don't owe you anything but one thing. Love. Oh, I'll never forget what the Lord said. Do unto others before they get a chance to you, do it unto you. Huh? Why? I messed that one up. Oh, 
do unto others as... Isn't that simple? I can never see somebody fussing at themselves. Now, we get mad at ourselves sometimes. We won't go that way. But see, as you love people, and as the love flows out of you, God's grace is working in us, making us willing to do His good pleasure. And as we allow Him to work in us, now, all of a sudden we say, oh boy, God's been working in me. Telephone call. You Pastor Bob? Yes, sir. Well, brother, I'm sorry you feel that way. Well, brother, you know, if I offended you, I'm very sorry. Can I pray for you? Well, brother, I love you. But I still love you. God bless you, brother. Bye-bye. Click. How many would feel like rising up and walking through the phone line, grab the brother by the throat and choke him to death? <laughs> but see, when God does the work in you, you can't help but blessing them. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 3 verse 8 and 9 let's see what that looks like real quick like no it's first Peter then sorry 3 8 and 9 yeah Finally, all of you should be of one and the same mind, united in spirit. Are we? Are we? Oh, that's a weak. Are we? Oh, well, see, God's looking for the uh, <clears throat> unity where he can bless us more. So look what it says. United in spirit, sympathetic in with one another, loving each other as brethren of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble. That's our attitude towards one another. Or the next verse. Never return evil for evil. You know, you might have done that in the past. You might not have repented. God will, God will forgive you. Never return evil for evil. Why? Because what you sow, you reap. That's simple. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, so shall he reap, good or bad. And it goes on and says, <clears throat> or insult for insult. Scolding, tongue lashing berating, but on the contrary, blessings, praying for their welfare, happiness and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. Have you ever tried to love somebody that gave you a good tongue lashing? Try it, you'll like it. I have. Many times. Because, see, when you're secure in yourself and you've got your shield of faith on, it just hits the shield of faith and you don't take offense. Let me ask this question to the congregation. How many in here still get offended real easy? You don't have to raise your hand, but let that run through your mind. You know, we're not scolding you. We've all been there. Nobody likes to be tongue-lashed or put in 
on. That's why the Bible says do everything for edification, building each other up in their faith. How many in here that does something wrong and you don't need nobody to tell you done it, that you've done it wrong, but you know intensive inside in the spirit you've done it wrong? How many can raise their hand on that? Look at that. Everybody. Everybody. If you've done it wrong, I don't have to tell you because why? Because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. And he's the one that loves us. And is jealous over us. That's in James chapter 4 verse 5. He loves us with a jealous love. Wow. So, the, now you know you're growing and maturing. Okay. Now some of us have been so put down in our past that it takes a long time to break those old habits and and get built up in our inner man strong enough that we can take these fiery darts that come to us through people many times. But look what the Word of God, uh, God says. Because let me tell you something. If you start giving insult for insult, let me tell you something. The devil's behind that. And that poison going through your tongue will affect that person that you're doing that to. Are you listening? See, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's the spirit, it's the poison, it's the negative that comes through that person that you have to many times pray for. I pray that sometimes two days to get it out of my spirit. Because see, when you stand up here, I've got to have my spirit open for my spirit to flow out to you. Now, if your spirit is closed, then it comes back to me. How many of you understand that? All right. If you're walking in the Spirit, you know what I'm talking about. You can tell when people are receiving or not receiving. Look what it says now. But on the contrary, throw bricks at them every chance you get. What? Oh, contrary, blessings. Praying for their welfare. He just blessed you out? And you're going to pray for his welfare? Boy, you, I'll show you. Huh? No. Look what it says. Pray for their welfare, happiness, and protection, and truly pitying and loving them. Some people, you just have to love them into healing. Some of you understand that. We're not, go, we're not saying about their bad, but a rebellious child, you know, he's got a problem. And you can beat on him to doomsday, it won't do no good. Make him more bitter. Somehow that love of God's got to touch him. But the Bible says in, in, in Romans 2, 4, it's the goodness of God or the goodness of us that God's put that goodness in us that will lead them to repentance. I tell you, it's awesome. But anyway, look what it says. And truly pity it and loving them, for know that to this you have been called, that you may yourself inherit a blessing from God, that you may attain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection to yourself and to the other person. So we come to that place in our lives that now we're walking in grace and mercy, forgiving people, blessing people. If we mess up, we know what we do. We go to 1 John 1, 9. We get, get all straight again. And we keep on walking. And keeping our mind clear, clean. Now let's jump over to Romans now. And uh, Paul is going to give us a little more instructions about the law, okay? Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Now, verse 3, 4, and 5, he just lavishes the justification upon us that we're clean, we're, we have right standing with God. 
And in his day, and even in our day, people say, well, you know, all that grace is, is available. We'll just, well, the more we sin, the more God can pour his grace out on us, and people will see how much merc merciful he is. Paul said, no, wait a minute. That's not the right attitude. Look what it says in verse 8. What shall we say to all this? All this what? Verse 3, 4, and 5. Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace, favor, and mercy may multiply and overflow? Now you can see why he said that. <clears throat> because they were thinking that's the way it works. You sin a whole lot, then he'll pour into grace, he'll pour into mercy. But see, that's the wrong attitude. We won't get nowhere that way. Go to the next verse. He says, certainly not. How can we who died to sin live in it any longer? Oh, my goodness. Look at that verse. How many, how many has died to sin? Raise your hand. Yeah, we have. So how can we live in it any longer? Because we have a will, and we can choose. Even though we died to it, the old man has died to it, the old Adam has died to it that's in us, we can, we're still confronted with temptations, after temptations, and we can choose either to sin or not sin. Our bodies are not sinful. Remember this, these bodies are not sinful. They will do what you will them to do. If you will them to sin, then they will take part in it. And we'll read that a little bit further. And if you will to do righteous, righteous deeds, your body will respond to that. Simple is not complicated. Now, many times we think that just because we're tempted, we have sin. I'm going to say that again. And I guarantee you, many of you have thought that. Oh, that, oh I'm tempted, therefore I'm sinning. Listen, you get that straight right now. The Bible has something that says, blesses the man that, you know, that's, uh, that's tempted, but doesn't yield to it. No, when you yield to it by an act of your will, then it can become sin. So you, you're tempted in your mind. Catch this now. I'm trying to help you out. All of a sudden, I, all of you right here, all kind of thoughts have been coming into your mind. Is that not true? How many has been sitting here and all kind of thoughts have been coming in your mind? Raise your hand. I know, 100%. Absolutely. <coughs> Just because it has entered in your mind doesn't mean you've sinned. What is your attitude towards that which is coming to your mind? Well, you resist it with your will. Not my will done, but God's will to be done. And that you resist it. You cast those things down. So that's, that's where you walk. It, it, a lot of times it'll be that way. Sometimes you'll be under heavy attack. All kind of thoughts and weird thoughts and imaginations will come in your mind. And the devil's doing that to, put, to build that fear into you. And then you'll react, see. No, say, I died to sin. Sin will not have dominion over me. All right. Now, look, let's read on. Look at verse 3. Are you ignorant of the fact, the fact, this is a fact, that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, when we came to Christ, God put us in Christ. And when Christ died, we died with him. The old man died. We were baptized into him. God put us and baptized us into Christ. And now we are in him. And so he wants us not to be ignorant of that fact that we've been baptized into Christ. Just like the water is a picture of being baptized into water that shows that we've been baptized into Christ. That's a spiritual 
experience right there. And Paul don't want us to be ignorant about that. He says, don't you know, don't you be ignorant about this, that you were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. So you were baptized into Christ, and then you were baptized into his death. Goodbye, say, goodbye, Adam. Say, goodbye, Adam. Good riddance, Adam. All right. Cut off from Adam. You died to Adam. You died when Christ died. All right, look what it says. Next verse. <coughs> we were buried, therefore, <coughs> with him by the baptism into death. Now, that happened at the cross. When Christ died on the cross, we died with him. We were baptized in Christ. We were baptized into that death. And when they put him in the grave, we were there in Christ, in that grave with him, in that tomb. <clears throat> so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, so we too might habitually live and behave in newness of life. Now, God did that for us. And what we have to do is receive it by faith, count it done. That's what reckoning is. Reckoning is just simply counting it done. Now, the whole, when we do that, see, Abraham, when he believed God's word, it was counted unto him as righteous. When we believe God's word, it's counted unto us as righteous. All right? Next, for if we have become one with him by sharing a death like his. Now think about it. We have become one like Christ sharing the death that he died. Yes, Christ died on the cross for our sins. <coughs> and we died with him. The old Adam is gone. Now the Bible says, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. The old spiritual uh, position, the old spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We have a brand new spirit man in us. But you have the same body right now. All right? Now, how many understand so far? A little bit. All right. Look what it says now. If we have shared his death like him, we shall also be one with him and share in his resurrection by a new life lived for God. So look at the sequences. In Christ, died with Christ, buried with Christ. Done, oh, Adam was done away with Christ. He was resurrected. Who was resurrected with him? We were, notice that, sharing his resurrection. The Bible says in Romans 8, verse 2, you don't have to turn there, uh, the law of the Spirit of life, that's that resurrected life in Christ, has set us free from the law of sin and death. How many remember that verse? Pop that verse up there real quick, uh, Rufus. Romans 8, verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has freed me from the law of sin and of death. Now the law is still there, but we died to the law. Turn to, uh, real quick, like to uh, Romans 7. Four. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ. Now let that sink in. We've already undergone that death. That's why we'll die no more. So that now you may be, belong to another, 
to him who was raised from the dead in order that we may bear fruit for God. Isn't that amazing? Go to the next verse. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passion that were awakened and aroused up by what, that, what the law makes sin, were constantly operating in our natural powers, in our body organs, in the sensitive appetite and wills of the flesh, so that we bore fruit for death. All right, next verse. But now we are discharged from the law and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive, the law of God. How many of you know where there is no law, there is no transgression? Go out there on the highway. There's no speed limit. You're doing 60 miles an hour. Used to be a, used to be a speed limit sign there, 40 miles an hour. But now they took the sign away, and you're doing 50. There's no transgression. Why? Because there's no law. There's no sign there. But you put the sign back up there, now you've really done it. So we died to the law. No, the law is not dead. We died to the law. We're married to Christ. And the Bible tells us that just a little bit. So now we have ser <clears throat> served not under obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting of the Spirit in the newness of life. And this is why you have to learn to read your spirit and learn to, when he says, okay, when he, uh, when he says no, Oh, yes. Now, I know some people can't understand that. I'm going to ask you a question. We have learned quite a bit about our, about our appetites of our body. How many in here knows when you're hungry? How many in here knows when you're thirsty? How many in here, in here knows when you're tired? How many in here knows when, uh, uh, what's another good one? <laughs> you feel lazy. <laughs> What is kind of weather you sure can. Now you learned all of those things by, hey, I'm tired. Did you hear a voice? I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm sleepy. I'm plump pooped out. You don't hear. <laughs> How many hears a voice? You don't hear anything. But you know, because it comes out of your fleshly part. Well, the Spirit is the same way. If it's a negative there, back off. If it's a yes, it's a positive. Now, as you, if you're going to grow, you're going to learn how to discern the Spirit within you. Because I'll guarantee you, if you're a Spirit-led person and you're looking at something that's in, in, uh, on TV, you're going to feel a negative in your spirit that you shouldn't be looking at it. Come on, don't shout me down. Come on, don't shout me down. I know those things. I've had to learn all that. What am I looking at that stupid thing for, you know? Well, it, it, it uh, you know, they're shooting one another up and hand grenades, blowing people up. <laughs> so you learn... By the Spirit is saying, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be looking at that. Okay. How many, say, somebody say, ouch or hallelujah. <laughs> All right. I know I'm touching holy ground there. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Next verse. What then do we conclude? Is the law identical with sin? Certainly not. Nevertheless, if it had not been for the law, I should not have recognized sin. So the law was put there to show us what sin was. All right, someone said, well, I've never broken one law of God. Anybody in here ever lied? Everybody's lied? I got news for you, you're guilty of them all. 
Yeah, but I never, yeah, you, you, if you broke one law, you're guilty of them at all. But you see, we're not under the law. In fact, we've died to the law. All right, let's finish that. In meaning, uh, for, for instance, I would not have known about covetousness, would have not had no consciousness of sin or sense of guilt if the law had not repeatedly said, you shall not covet and have an evil desire, the one thing and another. How many understand that? See, the law... Let's just know that, okay? Now, here's how you can tell you're still under the law. You feel that condemnation. You're conscious of it. Instead of having the Holy Spirit correct you, the law is operating, you feel condemned. So you've got to learn to that you died to, to the law. I, everybody say, I died, I died to the law. Is that scripture? Well, let's see. Next verse. But sin, finding opportunity in the commandments to express itself, got a hold of, on me and aroused and stimulated all kinds of forbidden desires, lust, covetous, for without the law, sin is dead. The sense of it is inactive and a lifeless thing. Now think about that for a moment. If you're still under the law, the law is going to activate all these desires in you. Some of you wonder, why are you still having all these different things? How many of you know there's a curse under the law? So God put us under grace. Now watch this. The commandments came. Sin lived again and I died. Was sentenced by the law to death. Let's read that. Once I was alive but quite apart from and unconscious of the law. But when the commandments came, sin lived again and I died was sentenced by the law to death. So here I am trying to keep the law, and it's bringing death to me. I, I go a little while longer, and I fail here. And it's more death, more condemnation, a vicious circle. So God takes us off of that system and puts us in grace, puts us in the Spirit. Now watch this. Catch the next verse. And the very legal ordinance which was designed and intended to bring life actually proved to mean to me death. So in my effort of trying to keep the law, it just brought death, more death, more death. It intended to bring life actually proved to mean to me death, death. You feel death, all this death in you. So how do you get out from under that? Next, for sin seizing the opportunity and getting a hold on me by taking its incentive from the commandments beguiled and entrapped and cheated me and used it as a weapon and killed me. So in trying to do it, you just died. You just died. People walking in death, trying to, they're just all dead inside. Go to the next verse. The law, therefore, is holy. Nothing wrong with the law. And each commandment is holy and just and good. But ain't nobody can keep it. And if, you ha if you're under that law and you think you have to keep it, you'll fail and fail and you'll die daily. You'll just die. Die on the vine. Next verse. Did that which is good then prove fatal, bringing death to me?
You can tell when people are really under the law because they have a negative spirit about them. Very negative. And that negative is nothing but death operated in them. They have no life, no joy. Bringing death to me. Certainly not. It was sin working death in me by using this good thing as a weapon. So the sin factor was working in Paul, Paul is saying, in order that through the commandments sin might be shown up clearly to be sin, that the extreme malignity and unmeasurable sinfulness of sin might plainly appear. So all that's operating in, 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 the, in the Ten Commandments and is showing you all this, and you're in this vicious circle. Next verse. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am a creature of the flesh, carnal, unspiritual, having been sold into slavery under the control of sin. All right, now he's talking about the, his, his old nature there. All right, move on to the next one. For I do not understand my own action. I am baffled, bewildered. I do not practice or accomplish what I wish, but I also do the very thing that I loathe, which my mortal instinct condemns. So here he is in this tremendous cycle of death, death. He's trying to do good. He's working that in the flesh. It's all in the flesh, trying to keep up with the commandments, trying to obey and all that. And it's just one big mess. All right, I want you to turn to that last, and we could go on with the time element. It's passing so quick. Uh, go to the last verse in, in, in 7. Now I want you to see something. Verse 25. Oh, thank God he will, through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then indeed I of myself with the mind and heart serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Then he goes on and says in verse, in that last part, he says in verse 24, back up 24, O unhappy and pitiful and rich man that I am. Now we've all been there, and some of we may be there in certain areas right now, but he says, who will release and deliver me from the shackle of this body of death? He says, I thank God. He will through Jesus Christ. So Christ has set us free. Now, turn back to uh, verse 4, 5, I'm sorry, uh, 7, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 7, verse 4. Now, Romans chapter 7, verse 4. And then we've got to close. <clears throat> Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ, so that now you may belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. So what is Paul saying? He's simply saying this. We have go undergone death to the law. We have died to the law. Go to the next verse real quick, and we'll finish up here. When we were living in the flesh, mere physicalized, the sinful passion that were awakened and aroused up by what the law makes sin. So you try to keep the law, and it, it stirs the sin factor in us, in the, in the old man. We're constantly operating in our natural powers, in our bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we board fruit for death. The next verse. Verse 6. But now we are discharged from the law, and have terminated all intercourse with it, having died to what once restrained and held us captive. And that happened at the cross. 
So now we serve not under the obedience to the old code of written regulations, but under obedience to the prompting of the Spirit in the newness of life. We die to the law. That's for the lost man now. We come over here, now we're in the Spirit. And now we serve God by obeying and the prompting of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts us in us. You learn the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And you just know intuitionly what is right or wrong. You don't need to know. We're not under the law anymore. But that's still a very important because it shows the sinner and it rouses his sinful nature up where he'll turn to Christ. All right, and then the last verse. Well, that, that was it right there. Okay, you can cut it off right there.